fresh tracks on the red planet mean new inroads for China in the latest space race. The Churong rover went out for a drive on Saturday, making China the second country after the United States to land and operate such a vehicle on Mars. From the moon to Mars, the country has accelerated its space agenda. This week, engineers have been analysing pictures from the Jurong rover on Mars. China, only the second country after the United States to achieve such a feat. It entered the space race late, but it has matched and in some areas surpassed the milestones reached by the Americans. China is pushing back against the US on, wait for it, Mars. That's right, Mars, the planet. The U.S. and China are locked in a fierce battle in the race for Mars, and it's heating up. China has successfully landed its Mars rover on the Red Planet for the first time, joining the U.S. just months after NASA landed its Perseverance rover. China has announced its plans to send astronauts to Mars. And they also have plans to build a base on the moon. Will China overtake NASA and the rest of the world when it comes to space exploration? Let's find out. planet. What's it up to? We now have images that Tianwen once sent back to Earth. This video of the precious 10 seconds showing snippets of the landing sequence is for the history books or digital archives for that matter. After a week of preparation, the rover is ready to explore the surface of Mars. Let's learn more about the rover. Beside me is Durong. It's 1.85 meters tall, about the same as me, and it weighs 240 kilograms. As you can probably tell, Jurong is fully equipped to explore the Red Planet. China's rover will now tread across the Martian terrain to learn what it can about the planet in hopes that humans can one day land there too. They have even managed to create Mars on Earth. This simulated space station has been built on the edge of the Gobi Desert, where the land naturally looks like the Red Planet. It is used for talks and tours, building knowledge and support for an ambitious space agenda. The Chinese rover that's uh, just landed is, is quite a bit smaller and less capable than we have. I think, uh, you know, the Chinese are looking at a very long haul on this. And as we're starting to see with their space station, the things they're doing on the moon and things mm. like that, they are moving ahead in a very steady, solid pace, whereas mm. U.S. government missions have a tendency to swing back and forth depending on uh, the administration. And then over here, coming down the side, we've got the private sector with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Branson. NASA's administrator Bill Nelson, so help me God. sworn in earlier this month, congratulated China's space agency, but also warned Congress that China has ambitious plans for both Mars and the Moon. Curiosity, perseverance and all this is all English names. Tian Shu places huge significance on having Chinese names in space. I don't know um, what the rest of the world would see what China has done. I guess this is when, you know, Zhu Rong was named. Deep down, that we hope that people would understand a little bit more about China as well. Also groundbreaking, the very capacity of Tianwen-1. You see, it's composed of an orbiter, the mothership that makes observations from above, a lander, something to reach the surface, and a rover, a moving probe that explores the ground. No other mission has attempted all three in one go. Much attention is now on the rover, Zhurong, named after the god of fire in ancient Chinese mythology. Side note, what we call the red planet in English, the Chinese call the planet of fire, hence Zhurong. They're going to be landing humans on the moon. That should tell us something about our need to get off our duff. But a lack of transparency and cooperation has led to questions about China's extraterrestrial intentions. It recently had the world fretting about an out-of-control rocket, the debris eventually falling into the Indian Ocean. NASA's Curiosity rover has been on the ground since 2012, making for a lot of competition in this next frontier. Many countries have military applications, many have civil applications, but they're very clearly sort of split off and delineated. We don't have that with China, and so historically, we've always had a delay in getting data.
Tianwen One arrived at Mars on February the 10th, 2021, and started to look for a good place to land the rover. On May 14th, 2021, the Tianwen One orbiter released the lander with the rover on board, and it landed safely on the planet's surface. This made China the only other country besides the USA to orbit, land, and release a rover onto the surface of Mars. Each breakthrough has been bolder, and this is a space program with boundless funding and political will. The Chinese may not be the biggest and the baddest, but when it comes to technology, it seems like they always outdo everything we here in the United States do. How big an advantage is that in space? Yeah, I'm not sure they're necessarily outdoing everything we do. But they're very good at sitting back and watching what we do, and maybe in some cases even copy. Again, I don't think there's like a fear that I have that technologically they're going to get ahead of us. But I think that as far as politically, in terms of staying in the game, staying solid, keeping the funds going, big picture thinking, that's where we need to uh, to be looking out. Right in the middle of all this, they're talking about 2028, 2031 for us, sample return. In the middle of all this, you may see SpaceX go zooming out there and do something. The rover is only intended to explore the planet's surface for just three months. China is the second country to succeed on Mars, and China has done in a single go what NASA took decades to do. But is China actually copying what NASA and SpaceX are doing to get to the top? Every launch from here represents China's advance. It already has its global position as an economic and military superpower, but there is another dimension to the symbolism, prestige and patriotic sentiment gained by success in space. The U.S. and China facing off, NASA's Perseverance versus China's Zurong in the rover tech in Mars space race. The two rovers on a mission to find out everything it can about the mysterious red planet. But while they share a common goal, many are wondering which rover will come out ahead. Back to our rover. Powered by the sun, Zurong weighs around a quarter of a ton. It's equipped with six instruments, including cameras, ground-penetrating radar, a magnetic fuel detector and weather sensors. The overall mission is vast to examine the atmosphere and ground layers of Mars and look for evidence of water ice, anything that could help establish the conditions for life. Let's take a look at what the rover can do. This is the rover's mast, which has three operating modes, including unfolding, yawing and pitching. Its cameras have a full view of its surroundings. These are solar panel wings, which can adjust their angle to track the sun and generate power. Pretty useful. This is an antenna, which is used to communicate with Earth. And this is the mobile device. It has multiple travel modes, moving forward and backward, making turns, and even walking sideways like a crab. But Mars is the new prize for the new space race. China wants to start sending crewed missions to Mars and deploy a massive commercial-scale solar power plant by the year 2050. We wish them the best of luck. While the U.S. is a global leader in space exploration, China successfully landing Zurong on Mars makes the country the third nation after the Soviet Union and the United States that has landed a spacecraft. The rover touching down in a relatively easy place, a basin in the northern hemisphere known as Utopia Planitia, where NASA landed its second rover, the Viking 2, in 1976. That's more than 1,200 miles away from the Jezero crater where the U.S. landed its Perseverance rover in February, a tougher landing area compared to Utopia Planitia. But that's because Perseverance is equipped with a more advanced landing system called Sky Crane. Sky Crane maneuver has started. And because of the different types of terrain, China and the U.S. prepped their rovers with different scientific goals in mind. While China wants to get familiar with the new planet, the U.S. has more than 50 years of Mars research. But when it comes to tech, China may be bringing better technology to Utopia Planitia than NASA did decades ago. Zhurong also has a number of sensors such as a multi-spectral camera, terrain camera, meteorology monitor, surface composition detector, subsurface exploration radar, and a magnetic field detector. All of these will help the rover survive on Mars and facilitate its mission. Equipped with multi-spectrum cameras that can take photos in different color filters to study Mars surface, China's Zurong also has a penetrating radar that emits radio waves. And when pointed at the surface, the rover can pick up signals and collect data about what's underneath. 
specifically ice water. Named for the Chinese god of fire, Zurong also has a Mars rover subsurface exploration radar, magnetic field detector, and meteorology monitor. China might end up being the leader in the space race and may make it to Mars before NASA, but there are many things to overcome, and a trip to Mars can take seven months to get there, and no one knows the effects it will have on an astronaut's physical and mental well-being. But these are things that the Chinese Space Agency is surely working on. Juro has a planned working life of 90 Martian days. That's about 93 days here on Earth. But if it's anything like its lunar roving cousin, the U-22, designed to work for three months and it's now in its third year, we could be hearing from the Chinese rover on Mars for a long time to come. Jurong has a designed lifespan of about 90 Martian days. It's expected to complete multiple tasks, including measuring the Martian environment, mapping the morphology and geological structure of the planet, and analyzing the material composition of the surface. 